Good morning. Yes. Welcome. Hello. Oh, good morning. Good morning. What good time afternoon. Is it? Come on in. I know. What time is it? <laughs> I just got off a plane. We're going to blame somebody. Let's blame me. Come on it's in, fine. y'all. We're Come still on here. in. You only, it's only like eight minutes. It's okay. Uh, only eight minutes. Uh, we black. You can't be late when you're black. Am I lying? I well, didn't say anything. I, I just see? looked at you. <laughs> She works I in corporate America. At you. She knows. I didn't say anything. Hello. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, Laugh and Learn with Flay Monroe, Nick Smith, and Lauren Hogan. I'm sorry we're a little bit late. Mm-hmm. My plane was delayed about eight minutes. <laughs> but I got ready in about four, for real. So this is a... It yeah. was pretty impressive, too. I got to give it to you. It was, it was a good, Lauren. It was pretty impressive, I'm yeah. I'm trying to see how to call my head the right way. What, what oh, wig wow. is this? What are we calling this wig? This is my Sharon Stone. Uh, <laughs> not Sharon Stone. Sharon Osborne Wig. So I'm giving y'all my Sharon Osborne Cheryl Underwood wig. Yes. Just in case the talk need a replacement. Get Sharon with a tan <laughs> and a penis. Yes! <laughs> hello, Playmates. Welcome to Laugh and Learn. Hello, Lauren Hogan. Hello, hello. I know Nick is coming in, but uh, yes. I just came in from Chicago, you all. I went home to get some stuff made and... Chill. I came home to hell, so I had to come home and cuss my kids out because they did not keep my house clean while I was gone. So I came in, <laughs> acted very black. <laughs> then I had to leave for about thirty minutes, and then I came back. And when you, when Lauren came upstairs, who was playing on the radio? Uh, Yolanda Adams. That's when I knew something was wrong, y'all. She was going to church, and I said, "Oh Lord." Because I happened? was in the midst of it all, and I, the battle was not about to be the Lord's. <laughs> it was about to be mine because I was about to fuck all three of my kids up. Let me just be real honest with y'all this morning, since I just got off that Southwest plane. Good morning, Flamets. Well, hello, Tribble. Hello, Kendall. Our cameraman is Kendall is here. Our producer Tribble is here. Where is Nick? Nick is not here. Yes, let's bring Nick in, everyone. Well, anyway, Nick, how was your weekend? My weekend was good. You know, Lauren, I spent the day running around today. Don't laugh. Flame and I had this talk. It looks like I'm going to be here in <laughs> Arkansas a little bit longer than I had thought. Uh, so I've been spending time kind of running around looking for a car. So that that's what my morning was today. What do you mean you're going to be in Arkansas longer than you thought? I thought you lived there permanently. Is, you want to tell us something? Well, no, I, I, I've, only been here, I've only been here a year. So, well, I, um, I know that, but... Yeah, so so it looks like I thought it would only be a year, but COVID had other plans, and uh, ah. I happen to be addicted to gainful employment. So, <laughs> flame, flame, flame's favorite adage is, "When you don't know what to do, Nicholas, just sit still, just sit still." So that's uh, kind of like that. And then I went to <laughs> DC uh, this weekend, Lauren, and I'm gonna tell you, I thought about you because you and I were talking about King, and I, I mm-hmm. paid a visit to the King Memorial and all that. But you and I have just talked about how, uh, you know, his legacy still rings. To Atlanta and I know how much time you spent there so it's just one of those things you just feel connected whenever you get a chance to uh visit you know the monument and all that so definitely yeah I definitely would just make this recommendation if anybody's trying to see all the monuments at one time just get on a little scooter trust me it'll save your life because I'm I know better I took a scooter <laughs> and only cost me about $23 and I was all going all around the monuments for about four hours so absolutely That's it's how you the most it. effective way to do it for sure so and I believe, uh, Flame, you have some big news to announce, correct? We couldn't do it last week, but we can do it this week. What's the big news? Oh, yeah, I came home and cussed my kids out. That big news? No. Oh. no. <laughs> but it, it does pertain to one of your kids, though. Well, the, the same one theory I was proud of last week. To yes. When I came home today, when I got that plane and walked to my house, and my house wasn't clean. Oh, I showed up like Betty Wright. That I was the cleanup woman. And I cussed my kids out. I'm telling y'all in the gate, I'm that parent. I'm the regular parent. But on the flip <laughs> side of that, let's go here. That... Last week, we were doing Laugh and Learn, and when we got off live, the mailman had ran. So I went and got the mail. It was a letter from T- Tennessee State mm-hmm. University for my son. So I was like, well, what is this? I wanted to open it, but it was not addressed to me. And you know, it's <laughs> illegal to open somebody else's mail. As if I give a damn. Uh, but then I was being courteous. I said, dude, you got a letter. He said, oh, I know what that is. That's my acceptance letter. Ah. I'm like, acceptance letter? When you got accepted? Oh, they, they emailed me Friday. But he didn't tell me. Yeah, okay. This this is the house I live in, y'all. Not the house that Jack built, the house that the tranny <laughs> built. <laughs> so saying all that to say, Brubra, well, I should say Jamarcus, a.k.a. Brubra, got into Tennessee State University on a full ride. On a full ride, going the straight into program. the Honors College because he is graduating from high school with his associate's degree. I'm so. bragging and I'm patting myself on the back and that, that, that player too, even though I'm furious with all three of their asses right now. 
Mm-hmm. So very exciting news for sure. Uh, I'd like to uh, just kind of jump on that because I think it's, it's beyond that. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And this is once again, Flame, I've said it before. Yes, I grew up envious of friends of mine who had both parents in the home. I didn't have that. There is something to be said for the strength of a single parent who gives unconditional support. I love my mother so much because my mother never allowed me to question what was possible. And I love that you continue to push all three of them the exact same way. Flame, you can be a lot, but you have never had anyone question your love and your support to your children. And that is evidenced in Jamarcus's accomplishments. Okay, I got so two discrepancies. I got two dis- <laughs> thank, you, thank you, but I got two discrepancies with your statement. First of all, Lauren, can I be a lot? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> And secondly, what, uh, what did you say? You said um, a single parent in the home. Technically, it's two of us here. <laughs> she came through the door and cussed their asses out. <laughs> but he was ready to get the belt and beat some ass. I'm just saying, he, she, we lives. <sighs> he, she, we walked in the door this morning ready to fuck these kids up. Let me just be honest with y'all. <laughs> don't, 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 I've been gone for four days. I hustle. I don't even expect much from my children, but they will keep my house clean when I'm gone. Or I will take all apparatuses, cell phones, computers, credit cards and everything else and y'all ask to go like y'all live in the 70s for real like you ain't, you better go play some stickball <laughs> well flame hold on now i thought i thought dr spock and oprah said that the correct thing to do is time out you talk to your children because you're you're angry with yourself you're not angry with them it's only dirt that's a joke right flame? that's a joke right it, no. it, cra- it it did not land. That joke didn't land for <laughs> Pimpin. I need you to stick okay. to news, honey. I thank I you very like, much. Speaking of telling what? jokes, <laughs> I got on stage for the very first time in more than a year this past Friday at Club Riddles in Chicago. And it was just all right. It wasn't great. I'm sorry, Flame Mess, that I could not bring y'all on live, but the club was tripping real hard. It was only like 24 people in the damn club, too. But they would not let us go live. So that's the reason I didn't go live. I know y'all. And then I, then, then I went dark. Because I was on something else. Hmm. I wasn't telling don't, don't jokes, tell, but I was definitely mm-hmm. making somebody laugh. It's like, don't tell cry. your business. Don't tell your business. <laughs> that, that, that kind of business. It wasn't that. It was, it was some other business. It was some very personal business, but it wasn't not like that. <laughs> Did but it so feel I'm good to get back on stage? It felt weird. It felt like I had to step outside myself and push myself to get on stage because I hadn't done it. And I'm so used to coming to y'all now on here and I couldn't find my footing for like the first three and a half minutes because the audience was a little <laughs> threw off of me. <laughs> but yeah. then it came around and it got better. So it was good. And I started with the person who I started doing comedy with, who is Damon Williams from Chicago. So I, I went to his club and just showed up and worked with Coco from Detroit. And she was great. Okay, let's get to the topics. Enough about me. Well, I'm talking about my <laughs> I'm here. Oh, my boobs look huge. So wait a minute. Wait One a minute. of the things as we move into uh, transitioning, I, I'm interested in hearing Flame Ed sound off about this as we continue to talk about other things because we have five really good topics to jump into today. But one of the things I noticed while I was in D.C. over the last four or five days is that there are a great number of people eating outdoors. And I think that what, what it reminded me of, and the weather wasn't the best the entire time, it's not California. And I sat there and I, I posted this question on Instagram last week and uh, opinions were all over the place. But I've never been a fan of eating outdoors. Like I'm, a, I'm, I'm aware of that. I've never enjoyed the alfresco fighting with the elements, sounds, streets, bugs, whatever. But it seems to be friends of mine there said, Nick, I think this is the new normal. I think you need to expect that everything will be outside now, that people won't be comfortable going inside restaurants. And I'm just interested to know how you all feel. Do you prefer to eat inside or outside or do you care? I love a good rooftop situation. And I don't know, maybe, because honestly, like, that's really a thing in New York. Like, for instance, like, if you talk to, like, people that are from New York, even, like, my mom, like, rooftops, outside, parties, eating, all of that, that's been, like, a thing in New York. I mean, in California, too. So, and I don't know, maybe it's just something that's popular among, like, my generation, but I love eating outside. You know, it's fun. You know, you get some ventilation. Sometimes when you're inside and in closed spaces, you may get hot, different things like that. I like eating outdoors and hanging out outside. It's, it's fun for me. I'm not, I'm not a fan of it. Oh, because I don't so like flies. Because thing. I don't like flies. <laughs> no, seriously, I really have a pet peeve about flies. Like, if a fly get on me, I'm disgusted. Because well, your nose is a yeah. horrible beast. Yeah. And if they could kill us, they would. I'm trying to fix this hair get on my face. But I don't like to eat outside because I don't want to share my lunch with flies. And if they didn't help pay for it, they can't eat with me. So that's yeah. <laughs> but I do. I mean, I do think that. I, but you know what? It must be something with Beverly Hills because, like, last year when I had a birthday party at Common's house and we sat mm-hmm. outside. 
No flies. And he didn't have any of the bugs. So yeah. the flies must be trained not to come to Beverly Hills. They will not come to 90210. Mm-hmm. So maybe we should get rich enough. I don't know just about 90210. I'm wondering, where are you going to eat where you got flies galore? Well, what fly- is the restaurant's uh, health department rating? Well, not indoors, outside. That's what I'm saying. Outside, what's the yeah. what's the rest the, the uh, restaurant's department of health and grade? I think, that, because- I think part of my issue, too, is like... L.A. is just filthy, right? And I no, think wait, it's, hold uh, on, wait a minute, player. Hold on, back well, it up. You, back not it just up. L.A., L.A., <laughs> San Francisco. You know what I'm saying there. So I, I, you, you're competing with the the cars and the Jersey barriers and the smells and those Our who are smog. We have and smog those, issues. Smog okay. and those who are okay. housing insecure, possibly. You know, and and it's just there are a lot of things happening to distract from the meal. I think when you're outside, or that's been my experience, particularly when you're off of like Melrose in those areas. You know, oh, but see, I'm just, not one of those people. People. Like you know, like you people, you eating and you see something disgusting, and it, ch- and it turn your appetite off, baby. I, I'm, I'm not putting it in my mouth, so it ain't gonna turn my appetite off. And if I pay for my meal, I'm gonna continue eating. I don't give a damn. Don't come over here with that, <laughs> Lauren. Where are we going this morning? Um, honestly, we got we a got, lot of things we, to talk about. We baby. have a we have a topic to start with. I think we can still start there, but I, as you, I'm sure know, Nick, we're gonna add something else that has to be discussed oh we got to yeah so um we can honestly let's start with the uh black army officer that was pepper sprayed in a traffic stop and there's been some new developments around that too as of this morning Um, as well which is great for me because remember last week when i told y'all that they called me about my son joining the military and i said absolutely not and this black man has shown he was a lieutenant right yeah and they have disrespected him and he was so cordial very professional. He was articulate in his speech. He kept a calm, cool temperature. He really tried to de-escalate that situation. I watched that on the plane. And I'm telling you, I watched it three times to watch this man really try to control the narrative of the situation. He never was hostile. He never changed his tone and his voice. And this officer was just determined to do something, have something happen. He sprayed the man. The man lost his job. He going to sue his ass. I wish he would have put that... I keep telling y'all, they keep giving these police officers, these cowboys keep getting guns and pepper spray and tasers and passes. Start taking their pensions. Him getting fired is not enough for me because all he going to do is go up the street and get another damn job as a police officer somewhere else. Snatch that nigga's pension. When you put your hand in somebody's pocket, you make them pay attention to what you're saying. Flame is talking about Second Lieutenant Karan Nazario. He was in uniform being pepper sprayed and forcibly removed from his vehicle and put to the ground. And that video went viral last week. The incident actually happened in December of 2020 after a traffic stop. Uh, He was in uniform and the officer, which uh, again, uh, the officer has since been uh, released from his job. But I also think, Flame, just because you touched on that, I think this is also a testament to his training. And I think that that is just another additional value, I think, of the military is how he was able to stay calm in that situation. You you lauded his uh, professionalism in that moment. And I do think that that helped even a horrible situation. At least he sur- you know, that he was able to survive. I think the, the weight of that situation falls on the officers that I believe acted inappropriately. Um, but I think that the officer is to be commended for the way he handled the situation. I'm not going to just give the military a pass on saying that he, was, he got that tolerance from the military. I'm going to say that he was was trained by his parent whoever raised him taught him that the military would teach teaches you discipline it also teaches you how to be ready and on time and respectful but i'm going to say that that temperament that coolment that he had not only did he have the black talk from whatever house he was raised up in which we have all had the black talk if you don't know what the black talk is on this page i ain't gonna explain it to you google it if you ain't had the black talk somebody gave him the black he knew how to handle that situation I do believe that he learned some tactics in the military, but I ain't giving the military shit. The military have not respected the veterans. I, it ain't even about the black men. Veterans, period. Veterans in this country who have stood up and fought on the front line, lost limbs, arms, and some of them their damn mind. Some of these people are still alive, but they don't even know who they are. And the military does not, not you reach know, out to that, help them. Just, just to let you know, that's not a reflection on the military flame. That's a reflection on society at large that does not value military service. That That's sense. a reflection on the military, Nicholas, because don't they have the VA? The VA is a part of the military. The Veterans Administration is a part veterans of the military. Veterans Administration is a government agency. It's a federal agency. It's not part of the military. And they what is the military? Is the military not government? The, the military is a branch of as, as another armed services is definitely part of the federal government, right? Yeah, but, what I'm saying is, but what I'm saying <laughs> is, I thought you were, I, yes, gotcha. <laughs> 
Don't get off topic. Come on. We no, I was just saying that I think that we have to command because I, I think know you that, love the military, and I'm not. No, it's I'm not, not that I love the military. military. I just don't. I just don't think that they deserve blame in this situation. I was saying that I think that, like all of us, we're sum of mm -hmm. all of our parts, right? And I think that I wanted to just applaud the way he handled that. I thought that he was to be commended. I oh, did the, not think the, he was the, at fault. The lieutenant. Yes. I oh, thought, definitely not. Definitely so, not at fault. He that's was, all I wanted to say. He was. He wanted to get home. You now that was a point you definitely made. He wanted to get home to his family. But, but but why we got to kiss ass? Why we got to make excuse? Why I got to be apologetic when I haven't even done anything wrong? The officer never even said why he pulled him over. And he kept saying, I asked well, you three times, why'd you pull me over? He right. never gave him. This is what I'm talking about. They didn't, he didn't give a fuck. He had a gun and a badge and it was going to be okay. If, if this guy would have given him any aggression and you know that we speak aggressively, I speak aggressively. He at least he was schooled enough to know that because he got home to his family. Now the guy lost his job, but he gonna get another job. And I hope yeah. when they sue his ass, I hope they what what city was that? Uh, Norfolk, Virginia. I hope they clean his ass. I hope he cleans the police station out. Well, <laughs> to to both of you guys' points, I think that he definitely knew what to do because he drove. I think like another half a mile into a very well lit gas station, which I think. He was so smart to do because had this been outside on the, you know, the side of the road, That's it was right. dark. Virginia doesn't really have a lot of lights. If you've been to Virginia, it's not a well-lit area where he was. So I'm glad that he was able to go to this gas station. I'm glad that they have the footage so they can see what this officer was doing. And at the end of the day, it's just, you know, this is why I totally agree with Flame in terms of you want these young black men to go and serve your country but when you come back to this country you're not given the slightest bit of respect at all so i just um it's sad to see another case of this another incident and i also saw another report that's saying since the beginning of 2021 there's been at least 200 uh traffic involved stops among black people of or people of color rather where it's been an officer involved shooting God. and it's only april it's been 200 of these so and Nicholas, you have that temperament. You do, you, you, because Rosetta, I know your mama talked to you and she, she gave you the talk, but you know how to, because I saw you when we had that altercation with that guy. You remember when we did the show? Oh, yeah. But that wouldn't have been me. See, and see, I'm not that person. And if the officer would have got disrespectful and loud, guess what I was going to do? I was going right. to get disrespectful and loud. And I'm not, not thinking, even though I, my, my grown man this or grown person this needs to jump in and say, you need to get home to your kids, just calm it down. But the, the officer was aggressive. He didn't want, he wanted to be challenged. He was pushing it to be challenged. I thought the officer was unnecessarily aggressive. When, when we saw uh, Lieutenant Nazario put his hands out the window, he's talking to him calmly. He drove slowly, Lauren. We, you know, we talked about that. He drove slowly to the fire, to the uh, gas station. Like, I'm not trying to get away. I'm just getting to a well-lit area. I just want, hey, I want to know what's going on. Hands are out the window. Can you tell me what's going on? Can you talk? And he's just yelling at him. And, 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 and I don't know. I just felt like that was completely unnecessary. Well, this is completely. the setup, too, because the officer was saying, keep your hands out the window where I can see you, but take your seatbelt off and step out the car. So... <laughs> If he puts his hand back in the yeah. car, does that give you license to now, what, shoot him because, right. oh, you felt like your right. life was in danger? You, you're giving him mis mixed signals in terms of what he can do. And that's what honestly allows these, you know, opportunities for qualified immunity that we yeah. talk about, too, in terms of police feeling threatened. Because, oh, well, I told him to do this and he reached inside the car. I couldn't see what was in the car. So I felt, you know, that my life was threatened. It's just, it's a And then he thing. lied and got caught in his lab because yeah. of body cam. Mm -hmm. Lying bastard. And honestly, though, um, I remember... You, honestly, us not having tags on the car is I've I'm starting to notice because I've had an experience like this with even LAPD. I had just bought my car when I came back to Los Angeles and I had a temporary license up in the window, got pulled over and it was like, oh, you don't have any tags on your car. And I was like, well, I have, you know, my temporary license displayed. I don't have my I don't have everything yet. And the officer was very rude. He was an Asian officer, reached in my car, snatched it out. It was it was a whole thing to the point that my father had to get involved. So I just 
I have a lot of feelings about this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ain't it good to have a daddy? And niggas, I, 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 you know, we, we I appreciate my my father was in the Navy. You know, yeah. my biological father was in the Navy, so I appreciate what the what the veterans do. What I don't like is the disrespect that they get from our own from their own country. Yeah. And I'm mostly talking about men of color, black and brown people. I'm not even talking. I'm not. I don't know what. And I've seen some white veterans here with their signs. You know how many homeless people here said they are ex bed. Nobody did anything for them. They they're homeless and. Woo, woo, woo. So it is. It's just across the board to me. But I, at this point in time, I'm definitely not gonna let my son go join no military. Not in this country. We already at war. He. I told the man we was at a war. Don't you watch the news? He said, "What war are we in right now?" I said, "Don't you watching the trial of, of uh, Derek Chauvin?" I should have okay. said. Uh, no, I didn't say Derek Chauvin. I said of George Floyd because Derek Chauvin ain't on trial. You know, I think that's a really good point to make, and I think we can also segue now into that. That I. Uh, it's. It's annoying to me that the narrative is saying that, you know, we're watching the murder trial of Derek Chauvin. Derek Chauvin didn't get murdered. Okay, George Floyd did. So I think also, too, on the media front, we need to accurately display what's happening because that's only adding to the narrative of what the defense is trying to say. Derek Chauvin wasn't murdered. George Floyd was. So if you want to talk about a murder trial, it's the murder trial of George Floyd. He's the one that I think, was murdered. I think so. the reason they say the murder trial of Derek Chauvin is because it, w- it was because of his actions that we're at this point. So he needs to be held accountable, not George Floyd. No reason for George Floyd to be part of this narrative because George Floyd it is not by his own hand that he is in this situation. He is in this situation because he chose to, he being Derek Chauvin, chose to by accounts from his own members of his own police force, not use his training, went outside of his training, applied force that was lethal and it's because of those actions that he is being tried for the murder of George Floyd. That nigga <laughs> killed him. Let me we say We can it. agree to disagree because I still don't think that that's what should be said. So I hear you, Nick, but we can agree to disagree. That, that. nigga, that Chauvin is a shyster. And I'm telling y'all, they need to put that nigga on the witness stand and they need to let that lady prosecutor corner that nigga because she going to be the one because the men be acting all timid and shit. I'm telling you, all the balls now belong to women. Let me just say that. All the balls seem to belong to women. <laughs> the women got more balls than a lot of these men right now. And I said what I said, and I mean exactly what I said. Because their backbone is sticking up, and so many men are tucking their head because they're worried about their careers or their livelihoods or how much money they make and pushing integrity and just stuff that really matters to the back burner just for a check or to say I'm popular. Women are really black, and mostly brown and black women are carrying the burden for everybody. In black men mostly in the black community. I know some black men are going to be mad at me, but y'all know I don't give a fuck. Y'all do know that, right? Oh, okay. What happened, Lauren? No, I mean, I agree with you, honestly. The burden, honestly, it, it falls on us a lot of the time, and we're the ones that are, you know, pushing forward. But um, I'll just say this. I think at this point, between all of the expert testimony, and I, I saw that today, too. They were saying that in a lot of trials that they dream of these types of experts that are coming forward um, on behalf of the prosecution to really showcase, you know, just how in the wrong Derek Chauvin is. So I think that, <laughs> I'm going to just say this, he's going to have to take one for the white team at this point. I'm sorry, they're just going to have to do that. They're going to have to convict him. That's the only way that this is going to end well. Because I saw a report, I think in Business Insider yesterday, if I'm not mistaken, that let this verdict come back that he's not guilty. It's going to be some problems. So they're going to, Jarek Chauvin needs to take one for the white team just to keep the and, peace of America. And Lauren, I know, you have law, I know you have law enforcement in your family. And mm-hmm. I think that we can both say this is like the first time we've seen a crack in that blue wall. Because usually the blue wall stands together. And we have seen members of the police force say, this is not what we do at all. This guy uh-huh. completely acted and, outside of And they of the came law. out against him, Nicholas. It's so mm-hmm. many officers, including the captain, or what was it? The, the cap- chief. The, the chief, chief who fired him. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Everybody, If everybody is saying some horrible shit about you, it's not, it's not a lie. It's terrible. Let me tell you something. <laughs> This man here, and then they had the doctor come on in and say, oh, well, he had taken drugs and he was, he could have had. No. What, what, was she a doctor? The little young white girl? Was she, did she came on, she was, gave experts ter- testimony last week because I was watching I might have on missed CNN that. I didn't and see her. said that something about he was, um, 
he was under the influence or he was addicted. Not, none of which what which killed him. This nigga yeah. put his knee on this man's neck for nine minutes and twenty nine seconds, looking at the camera, and they got the and the, and I'm telling you, Lauren just made a very valid point. I do think that something will happen, but I think something will happen no matter what the verdict is because they raised a million dollars to for for the defense mm. to because they believe they want him to get off. We. We who have regular eyes who can see, everybody but Stevie One that can see that this nigga clearly killed this man. We watched it and we watch it every time they show it because they show it three, four times a damn day. So you cannot get away from it. He is guilty, but I'm telling you, be ready, y'all, because that judge, that judge. Well, I think, too, um, one thing I wanted to bring up, and this is. I feel like this is going to be an in tandem thing because we are going to talk about Dante Wright and what happened yesterday in Minnesota, just 10 miles away from here. But I think it's interesting to your point about the judge is because they were talking about today was sequestering the jury. The defense tried to say, oh, you know, there's this this new shooting, this new officer involved shooting happened yesterday. We should really sequester the jury. So I'm glad that the judge denied the request. But he said, but what we're going to do is a week before the jury goes to deliberate, they are going to sequester the jury. And I really want to know why. So, Nick, what are your thoughts? Uh, I think a couple of things. There are reasons uh, we know that there are benefits to sequestering the jury, but usually... Which are what? What are the benefits, Nick, in your, in your view? Sequester, the, well, th this is part of why they do it. The idea behind sequestering a jury is so that they can be cut off from any type of outside influence not associated with the trial. It is possible that if I'm married or if I have friends uh, with whom I speak regularly, it is possible one of them is upset about what they may have seen and may share that with me. Oh, you didn't hear about the kid who just got shot 10 miles away? Flame, what? No, what happened? I was in trial today. I didn't know if they, oh, Nick has gotten no better. Wow, that's weighing on my mind. I don't know that a juror being privy to that information the defense might argue, can still be w w measured and removed from influence if they're still seeing and hearing things that are happening in the community that may have the community once again marching in protest and demonstration. Do I then feel like as a juror, this is my opportunity to set the record straight or am I still being impartial and listening to the information presented before me? Those are one of, uh, many, the, one of the many reasons they try to sequester a jury in high profile cases if they can. You also don't want media knocking on their door. I've been part of that, you know, uh, when we have, you know, you are assigned, you need to find that redhead juror right there with the glasses, that the one who keep looking, she keeps getting emotional. Nick, that's going to be the one to give you the sound bite that you're looking for. So we're all trying to find her where she is, talk to her family member, all of these things. And a lot of times you really do want to protect these people who are only doing their civic duty by being on jury duty, you know? Um, and Lauren, to be clear, there are people who get this because I know some who dodge jury duty. So you've got people who won't even stand up and do their duty to do jury duty, yet they don't want those who, are, who have stood up to do the right thing to even have the protection of being protected from outside influences. So uh, you know why? Let me say, I'm sorry, niggas. I'm going to break your point, but you know why a lot of people, black people, avoid jury duty because we don't get the time off from work. A lot of people don't get that time, or they don't get the money for that, and then they're put in situations, and they have children. They don't give you an opportunity to say, "I got to go to daycare to pick up my kids." They care not going to care about that you in court, you know, for that. So, so flame. Let's just say that's true. Got it. So now here I am as a black man hoping. To get somebody like a you or a Lauren who may understand my background, but you won't even show up because, oh, I don't get time off. I got to take care of my kids. I got to do all of these things. And I'm looking for somebody who looks like me to be there. But then then somebody, as a black man, don't get your ass in trouble and expect no other black person to get you out of it because I got my own life. Then don't get in trouble. And I'm only talking to the ones that's guilty. I ain't talking to the ones that's innocent. So that that's that, don't don't put don't put me in that box with it because you on trial. I didn't put your ass in jail. I didn't do I'm not talking to you niggas. I'm talking about the person there. Don't don't look at me. I need somebody black. You didn't come to jury duty. I would have had to come to jury duty, nigga, if you wouldn't have got your ass in no trouble. And that's only for the ones that were guilty. I ain't talking about the ones that was innocent, because a lot of us are innocent that go to jail. So um, you cannot, 
everybody can't be your crutch. Your ass on your chest is to save you. Then don't get your ass in trouble if you can avoid it. But you can't look for nobody else to save you in that situation. And I don't like the way they do black. Like they put you in a they put you in a room and then they order lunch and some people get I'm telling you, I did jury duty one time. Can you believe it? I did jury duty? I was a good juror too. And they, they give certain people certain lunches and a, a certain amount of time to go and then different people. And I had young kids. I had to get home to my children. This is how I know from personal experience. You can't tell me I can't get home to my kids because this nigga on trial. Bring him back to court tomorrow. I got to go pick up my baby. I, we live in California. We had just moved here. I knew no one. So I didn't have anyone to say, hey, Lauren, can you go pick my daughter up from daycare? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Your your life mistakes, is my, your the excuses can't fall on me. That's what I'm saying. And I would like to see more of us in jury duty, but then they need to be a little more accommodating for black and brown people so that we will go to do jury duty because if I'm treated fairly and I'm talked to like I got, like you got some goddamn sense because I'm already grown. If you talk to me crazy, I'm going to talk to you crazy back. But if you talk to me like you got some sense, I'm going to give you the same respect that you give me. Nicholas, they don't do that. I'm telling you, the court system here, stuff here is just twisted to me. But as far as that, that young boy, that what was his name? Oh, Dante Wright. They are already looting and, and rioting. And and I'm sorry. And this is to my black people. Uh, looting is not rioting. I don't I don't think they were looting. Or <laughs> they weren't rioting, looting. They they, weren't I rioting. saw the thing that said they were yeah, looting. They, no, that's they what the they police chief is trying to say. The, but, okay, hold okay, on. Well, I steal from backtrack. Walmart. So let's, is that considered looting? I'm just saying. I do steal from no, Walmart. <laughs> let's backtrack. Let's, let, let, but let's let, backtrack. Before we move on, let's go back to Derek Chauvin. The, 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 <laughs> the Chauvin has been charged with second and third degree murder and manslaughter. So I do feel like, Lauren, they've tried to cover the bases there. And defense attorney Eric Nelson has argued that the now fired white officer did what he was trained to do and that Floyd's death was caused by illegal drugs and underlying medical problems. The prosecution may close and wrap up their case as late as as early as this week. I yeah. tell you what, I want to be home, though. No matter what happens, um, I, I would encourage be home. everybody to be home. Everybody to go get a case of water, stock up on some food yeah. because it's we don't whatever know what's gonna whatever the decision is. I want me and my children to be at mm -hmm. home, safe yeah. together. Because I hope you are not on the road and traveling, Lauren, you, Kendall, and Tribble. I hope everybody is all my flamettes. I want y'all to be home because you don't know. And I remember when OJ was com was uh, let off on uh, Nicole's mur kid, uh, Nicole Murphy's mm -hmm. murder. I was and at Ron the airport. Mm -hmm. People were enraged. Yeah. The black people were celebrating, but the white people were furious. Yeah. I thought it was going to be, a, and I was at Hartfield in Georgia. Mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be a damn riot at the airport. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm going to be home mm -hmm. and, with my uh, HJ. Hey. With my HJ. <laughs> and again, this would only be the uh, prosecution. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, the prosecution wrapping up their their case. And p many are wondering whether or not. And I just saw your guy, uh, Dan Abrams, just talking about how it would be foolish for the defense to put Derek Chauvin on on the stand, that he, w it w he would do himself a great deal of harm if he were to open himself up to cross-examination. Because let me tell you, his defense, the defense attorney is failing miserably. He's, he sucks. I'm sorry. There's just no other way to say it. He's a terrible. Well, I mean, I can't say that he's a terrible attorney in general because I don't know what his track record is. So let me clarify. In this instance of this case, he's terrible. Let well, he's re he's representing a terrible person. So true, good. True. Good. Because that nigga killed that man. <laughs> and I watched it. And I watched it upside down. I watched it with my glasses off and on. I watched it high and sober. And guess what? All the same outcome. He murdered this man in cold blood. I do want them to put George Floyd on this. I mean, not George Floyd. I want them to put Derek Chauvin on the stand. And I want that lady to prosecute it to corner that fool and play that video and tell him you cannot look down. You can't look away. You can't start writing. You can't do anything. Your focus has to stay on you. Kill and stop it right there at that moment. Because he said he was being distracted by talking to those young people who was telling him, hey, he's not moving. He can't breathe. He's dying. Mm -hmm. And he said he was distracted. He, he might have spoke Derek Chauvin two or three words out of that whole time you weren't distracted you had your hand in your pocket your knee on his neck and you was looking directly into the camera as if to say I'm gonna kill this nigga and ain't shit y'all can do about it and I would like them to stop that video in court in front of the whole of the world the all the world watch and say what were you thinking right there at that moment right there at that moment what was you thinking yeah. And make him answer. Ain't hey, no, uh, I don't know. I plead the fifth. I forgot. Nigga, take a privilege like I do and remember some shit. Listen. <laughs> 
as we segue, I do want to mention we had talked about as we closed last week, um, we were talking about how the shootings have not slowed down. And, and since, we, since we got off the air last week, two Navy sailors injured in a Frederick shooting, gunmen shot and killed at a Maryland military base. We also talked about how, and then also hey, on Thursday, NFL a player, uh, Philip Adams, and then Thursday, the workplace shooting in Texas. So, and then just uh, the one we were going to segue to next. Yeah. Well, we're going to specify this because all of those were not officer-involved shootings. So this segue for Dante Wright was another officer-involved shooting. It was just 10 miles away in Minnesota. So in, it's called Brooklyn Center, correct, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Brooklyn Center. Yeah. Um, so background, again, the there's conflicting stories. There's one story that says that the officers pulled Dante Wright over because of his tags, similar to the officer in Norfolk, Virginia. But there's another story saying that the officers pulled him over because he had an air freshener blocking his rearview mirror. But the mother is saying that that doesn't make sense because the windows were tinted. They had just bought him this car. Um, so the police pulled up, you know, pulled him over. They're saying that the reason why they had him get out the car is because he had a warrant out for his arrest. I saw part of the the footage or the body cam footage that was released today. The uh, Dante moved to get back into the car when he did the female. Actually, she's a female police officer. They don't want to confirm that yet, but I've heard that on the news. She's a female police officer claiming that she was reaching for her taser and accidentally reached for her gun and shot him. And she did apologize. So she um, is that going to bring his life back? No, but what I'm saying is, unlike oh, we were talking oh, about, oh, 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 I don't we were talking about, about that Derek, bitch apology. <laughs> we were talking about how the Derek Chauvin, like, so what we have in this situation, yes, in Minnesota, it is illegal to have air fresheners hanging from the mirror. That's that's the first thing, and I guess they saw that when they actually stopped him, right? Um, and then so when he moved to get back into the car, she screams, "Taser, taser!" apologize, pulled the wrong, pulled the wrong weapon. Um, so that, that is definitely, you're right, Lauren, that came out today that she, she's like, Oh, I, that's not what, so unlike say the Derek Chauvin situation where we agree he had intent or it looked like he had intent to kill. This was a mistake on her part, uh, is what they're Nicholas, saying. Nicholas, are you, are you serious? Nicholas, are you, I'm, I'm really serious right now too. Are you serious? You giving it, I don't no, want to hear. I, I, no, I know no, no. what you're saying, but okay. I don't even want you to com- put those in the same comparison. I don't give a fuck that she made a mistake. That was somebody's son. That was somebody's boyfriend. That was somebody's nephew, uncle. I don't no. give a fuck about an apology. I can't get my baby back. No, I understand that. That's not what I'm saying at all. I thought we were talking about what happened in this situation. That's all. I was just simply saying that that's what's come out today. The latest information is that she made a mistake. She has been, she has since been put on leave. Um, and as they can, and everybody had body cameras going. Uh, it is not like uh, they were trying to hide anything. They've been transparent about this from the beginning. So unlike the Chauvin situation, I feel like we have more to work with here that we can actually see what actually played out. Is this Here's- her first day? Was today her first? day no and this is and i'm I'm gonna just say this this is where my problem is right for those of you that have had a gun versus a taser i'm gonna just say this the weight is very different it's not the same weight it's just not and if you're a properly trained police officer it's very hard for me to believe that you accidentally reached for your gun didn't realize that you had your gun and then proceeded to fire said gun that's i just the weight of a gun and the taser is not the same thing. It's just not. It's not. The weight is completely, there is more, completely there different. There is going to be more to this Absolutely story. Absolutely not. Because she probably had a bad day or a bad night. You remember that's what they said about the, the guy who shot. He, she had a bad day because just like Amber Geiger, remember she had a bad night because the boyfriend who was somebody's husband that she was trying to cheat with, that she said he wouldn't come lay with her white ass or whatever the fuck she was. I said what I said. She got mad and walked in the wrong house and shot that man and killed him. And she apologized. I don't want your apology. I want you in jail. I want you the same thing you did to my kid is what I want to you. I want if my baby, baby, the Bible said, yeah, by all these Bible thumpers and I for an eye, baby, a life for a life. And I'm not saying go out and kill folks. I'm not encouraging that. I'm not even pushing that. But you're not going to give me no fucking apology. Oh, I'm so sorry. Sorry. That's as bad as you coming to me saying my bad. I don't give a f- my bad or what your bad or what. That's ridiculous to me that they should have put that bitch in jail. My, uh, oh, 
Woo, let me stop. <laughs> well, girl, if it is indeed true that she grabbed the wrong weapon, I agree with Lauren 100%. That is definitely poor What training. do you mean if it is true if she grabbed the wrong weapon? <laughs> wait a minute. What? I thought you all, wait a minute. Are y'all saying she did it on purpose? Yes, dear. Let me okay. say it again. Let me say it for you. The bitch did it on purpose. <laughs> okay. He was then black, what I'm saying is. And I'm assuming that she is white. Now, if she, she turned is, out, she's a white well, then officer. she did it on purpose. Then what I'm saying is, if she did it on purpose and she's saying she meant to grab the taser, then clearly she needed more training, right? I just, I can't fathom the fact that you didn't understand that you had a gun in your hand and not a taser. It's just, it's not the same weapon. It's, it's unfathomable for me for, for that kind of mistake to happen. And you want to say, oh, I'm sorry. Really? This is really? an actual... According again, this is from police chief. This was an accidental discharge that resulted in the tragic death of Mr. Dante Wright. Brooklyn Center Police Chief Tom Gannon said during a, today's press conference uh, where body camera footage from all of the officers has been released. And he noted that the very senior officer involved shouted taser taser during the arrest, apologized immediately that she pulled out her handgun when she fired the single shot that killed uh, 20. Or, so it was not repeated. It was one shot taser taser. Oops, wrong, wrong, wrong weapon. That so this is today, and this is um this was from the today's press conference. Okay, let's bring some flame in scene because I need to get some of the opinions. Go ahead, Mark, because Mark is all up in the comments. Uh, Mark, his back, Mark is heated over there. Mark, yeah. are you ready to fight? You want who you need to take that aggression out on? You want to take that aggression out on me? <laughs> you want to beat me, player? <laughs> Listen. First of all, first of all, there is no way it is humanly impossible unless you are impaired that you do not. First of all, the trigger pull is different on a taser versus a gun. The overall feeling of it, I can grab, I can be blindfolded and go pull four of my guns out and know which gun I'm grabbing. There's no way it's, it's impossible. And for the taser, don't you have to take a cover off before you discharge it? Yep. So you're right. that that is just the audacity that with that this is so close to what's going on right now in Minneapolis, and the audacity that they have come up with this cover up so quickly. I I just I don't know what to say, uh -huh. and there's no there's no rationale. Honestly. I agree with First Lady. First Lady said, "When have they started shouting taser taser? They don't do it. They just fucking do it. They might say one time, I 'I'm going to tase you,' but they already have the taser out. Mm -hmm. She reached and pulled out her gun. I, I I'm sorry, I'm with you, Mark. And and then they say she's a senior officer. She's a senior officer. So <laughs> then she had been trained. She had been trained numerous times. Uh, supposedly, this is goes back to the whole police reform. Stop mm -hmm. putting people in neighborhoods that they don't belong in. If you don't know me, you don't understand how I speak. You don't understand that I use my hands and aggression when I'm speaking, even when I'm not being aggressive. Then your ass don't belong over here in my neighborhood with a gun and a badge. Because when I see you, we were taught as children to respect authority, police, black road judges all but then you just come and being disrespectful child these young kids don't think like that no more and they stand up and speak for themselves but i don't even think that boy did that he called his, again he did just what george floyd did george floyd called out for his mama that boy called his mama on the cell phone first Before he called back happened. a minute later and the girlfriend answered the phone and the mama said that that he had been shot I mean, I, the girlfriend said, told the mama he had I just want to say that I think that that's the sad part about this because as, I'm going to just say, people of color, black people in America, when you get pulled over, you have the instinct to call a loved one so that way there's some proof to say this is what happened. So it's a matter of you feeling safe. And honestly... When Dante was pulled out of the car, I know that he went to go back into the car. It could have been a flight or flight situation. There's several instances of people getting arrested and not even making it to the police station alive. So in a lot of ways, we have that flight or flight instinct because we don't know what's going to happen because we don't feel safe. We don't know what's going to happen to us. So for the simple fact that she's trying to say like, oh, taser, taser, taser. There's just there's just too many holes in her story at this point. There are three. There are three body cam. There are three body camera footage from three played out today. Uh, where the officers can be seen approaching Wright's white car. One officer pulls the 20-year-old out of the vehicle, turns him around, attempts to handcuff him against the car. Wright struggles, gets back in. During that chaotic struggle, officer pulls out a gun and shoots. As he's sitting in the driver's seat, the officer can be heard on multiple cameras and microphones screaming, taser, taser, during the footage before saying, holy S, I shot him, and apologized immediately. 
That's that's what's what officers happens. know their belt. If that if that bitch had a gun in her face, she's gonna know which gun to pull out. They don't never make that mistake. They don't. Amber Geiger didn't mistakenly pull out her taser when she was going into her house. It's never the opposite. But now that's the cover up. That is complete bullshit. That yeah. there's no way around it. Uh, uh, complete. I agree with that. And I don't care what the news report, I don't care what the body cam say, that bitch was on a mission to kill somebody black. And I tell the bitch to call me because if she want to go toe-to-toe, gun-to-gun, tell that bitch to call me. (laughs) Because I think, I think I will say this, because of the the climate of Minnesota, what's happening around this Derek Chauvin trial, I think that in a lot of ways, police are on a more of a heightened alert. In a lot of ways, she might try to say like, oh, I felt like I was in danger because here we go. Here's another black man. We have this, you know, Derek Chauvin trial is going on. She, that might be the temperament of what the police department is right now. That's not in no way saying that that justifies her doing that. But that also goes to us saying, you need to actually have well-trained officers in these situations to de-escalate it. And as a senior officer, you still chose to pull the wrong weapon? Bullshit, like you said, Mark. You're a senior officer. You were supposed to be trained to de-escalate these situations, not heighten them because of your insecurity as an officer on the job. That's not our problem. As a senior officer, you've pulled your gun out more times than I have shot any of my guns. And like I said, put me in a dark room with 10 guns, I could point out the four that are mine. Would you pick out my gun out them four, though? Could you pick could you pick out my gun is the question. <laughs> this with is not love loud. Closed, pimp. This is not love loud. <laughs> no, this Look is... But this is laugh and learn, so we're laughing. You know, Mark, it's such a heavy conversation. Yeah. I just want to bring it back a little bit because I'm I'm we, I'm emotional. You emotional. Lauren angry. Nicholas is giving us all these things that these people say. I'm telling you something. I don't care what that lady said. If when you all become parents and all you you all that millions of dollars and the 27, 30, 40, 90 million dollars. None of that will suffice bringing back your loved one. And whether that's whether you're a parent or you know it could be your brother, your mom, your dad, whomever it is. Nothing, none of that money will suffice having that person back. And look, and your argument that you made last week about you know the, the, the service calling your son. When I saw that story over the weekend, the first thing that came to my head is that we just had this conversation yep. last week. Mm-hmm. Yep. And it's just, I mean, an army medic that like you see that this man is in uniform and you are acting like a complete. You know ass what? Clown. You know what I, uniform he saw that man in, Mark? black his black skin that's what exactly what he saw him in that's all he and saw. here's the thing he's a hispanic officer exactly like, do people forget where they come from and the own oppression that they face in there say that again lives? mark okay. say that again mark you didn't open up a can yeah, of you worms did because if say that again there, because let's talk that's about what it. they that's let's what it is it. it didn't matter that he was latino or that he all they saw and you know latinos come in different hues they come just like we come from, from all the, like 31 flavors like Baskin Robbins he saw black he didn't ask the man he just fucking saw black he didn't see the uniform he saw black but this if Mark opened up the can of worms if we're gonna go here part of the issue I will say for the Latino community specifically like when they when you are immigrating to this country and Mark please feel free to step in at any point or if you want to correct me if I'm wrong but this is what I have I have friends that I work with that are actually still trying to obtain status here. Coming here, part of the process when you have to check off with your ethnicity is, for instance, when you come to this country, if you're you know, immigrating from another, there's no box for you to check off Hispanic or Latino. The only kind of box option is for them to check white. So in a lot of ways, you have this underlying systemic racism within the Latino community where they're basically being dehumanized and stripped of their identity because they have to assimilate with this white culture. And then it only perpetuates when you have some of these Latino officers that come onto police department or on the fire department or there or there you have you that they're trying to assimilate with their counterparts, not realizing that you are still a person of color. Mm-hmm. And then you get an officer like a Joe Gutierrez who feels in his spirit that he has this white privilege autonomy to treat another officer Um, you know, in the military this way. So it's a perpetual cycle, honestly, that's probably, I don't ever see it being broken, but that's part of the issue here. It is. Also, I think it's people, again, they don't, people don't take, uh, they don't view life outside of their own experiences. Uh, And when I say that, you would think that this Hispanic officer could relate with somebody else who's of color in this country but he didn't. He wasn't even thinking that big. He was. It was. This is a black man. Not that he's another person of color. It's just 
again, he didn't care that this person shared a similar experience probably being in America as a person of color. He just saw that this person was, like you said, black. And people just, they, they forget about, um, I, I don't know, they're not human, to, to my opinion. I, I don't see these people as human. That's just... Well, you know, Mark, what Lauren said about the Latino people that with them having to pick and choose a side, I, I, some of that is very true because look at when Trump ran, you know, and all the Cubans. Marco Rubio. Uh, yeah, all the Cubans voted Trump. They all went c- conservative, but... Child, they 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 now you know they they jumping bandwagon, they jumping ship, but now they want to switch, not switch over to Democrat, but now they are not holding Trump accountable, and they all got stimulus checks. I see it because I probably sent a couple of them out. They got stimulus checks, and they 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 cash their check. I know I'm to that sound off topic, y'all. I don't mean to sound off topic. I'm sounding real crazy right now. Yeah, you good? But <laughs> I know some Latino people. I know some Latino people personally that do not identify. As Latino? Uh, well, yeah, well, I didn't want to say it like that, but they, they identify as white. And I'm like, yeah, and you know, Claire, someone you ain't white. A comment. Someone said they trained the human, uh, uh, Ebony, she said they trained the human out of all police. And I think that is an interesting, t- it, it, it goes back to this culture of policing because it is, it's not a war necessarily between people of color and police. It's literally this problem with police and African Americans in this country. Um, and you've seen it with the mix officer in the uh, George Floyd incident. You know, he was there. He witnessed it. It's it's literally a mentality. And it's I don't know how we root it out because politics comes is this part of this. But it's so deep and it's such a complicated history I don't know if it's ever going to change. How do you change it? You can, It's impossible to go into every police department. Sure, you can start with unions and stuff of that sort, but it's impossible to go into every police department and reform them. I mean, the Minneapolis Police Department, their chief is a black man, and he still has this stuff going on in his own department. So... The, what is what is there? What can be done, and how is it he stop? is in Minnesota, and he is a chief of police, and he's a black man with very limited power. Thank you. Let's very let's limited. Call a spade a spade. Understand what that is. That is limit. That's called limited power. I don't give a fuck what his title is or how he identifies, but his title is his 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 responsibilities are limited from people above him. And I'm telling you, he is dancing the dance to keep his job, which I just said, baby. He is dancing the dance to keep his job, and I'm not beating him up because he's not the one on trial here. He's not the one who pulled the gun out and did all the bullshit. That was the the officer down there. I just think that it's so sad. The young man was I, I don't know the whole scenario. I don't know if he was in trouble. I don't know if he what what was going on. But I, let me just but it say doesn't this. even matter at this point. Well, wait a minute. I, well, yes, this more. part do matter. I know this. I'm you know this laughing line. The nigga was fine. Can I just say that he was? <laughs> That little poor young boy was so handsome. Oh my God! That it, do it hurt more? Is that or is it me? Does it hurt more when they good looking? No, I mean not for me. It hurts in general. <coughs> Look at her trying to play well, a girl. Look, now she want to be well, a girl. <laughs> here's the thing. I mean, but it's interesting that why do we allow this uh, this conversation to always happen? And it's like, well, okay, it kind of makes it less of an impact if this person had a warrant or if they were fighting. It's like they didn't deserve. That treatment. Well, that's what they do, Mark. If look, this right. is what we were talking about with George Floyd. Yep. Derek Chauvin is not on trial. George, George Floyd, Floyd is, is on trial. Yep. This is how they do us. This is the system that is set up for us to fail and lose. Yeah. Yep. And I'm a lot, the last thing I'm going to say, speaking of the George Floyd trial, again, we've talked about the judge. Everyone pay attention to the prosecution looks, in my opinion, they look scared of this judge. Every time they ask a question, they glance at the judge as if, like, is that okay? Like, am I about to get in trouble? I've never seen Eric, who's the defense attorney, I've never seen him look to the judge unless there's an objection by the prosecution that the judge overrules. That's the only time he looks up at the judge. Other than that, he's comfortable with his uh, cross-examination. But the prosecution, especially the black prosecutor, looks intimidated as hell by this judge. And to me, that is a problem. This judge, you ju- is a problem. we just sell yeah, limited so power, Mark. I'm telling you. Yeah. We we still have to, as they say, we still need to know our place. We still have to. I'm. T- it is sound. It sounds ridiculous to say in 2021, but baby, it look like it's more prevalent now than it was in '74. Well, I think that's the sad part is that we're still living in the same reality. 
that's the sad part that we have to acknowledge. What's really changed? What's changed? Uh, Nicholas, you're very quiet on this conversation. You no, know, you all have it handled. You know, I, I stay in my lane. <laughs> what lane is that? What lane is that? Mark, thank you so much. You know, we appreciate you as always. Bye, Mark. Bye, Mark. Yeah, it, 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 Nicholas, it's just disheartening to me that the he, 20 years old, he has such a bright future. It's scary. Shit, I got a baby. That make me think about my son going to Tennessee now. I'm going to tell him, you can't leave off campus. You stay on campus. Don't I leave told you, campus. being in that climate, it's no different. My mom had to have a conversation with me when I went to Georgia. I went to Spelman, but that's still... Georgia was different then. I was in school when Donald Trump got elected. Okay, so... Hey, Vesper. But I do think, Lauren, just to touch on that, I do think that there's a, a familial comfort that comes with being at an HBCU, that it is a family that you tend to look out for one another. That's where I feel like um, uh, Jamarcus will thrive in, in, in that environment, you know, away yeah. from home, but on, he'll still have On, on campus. campus. On, on campus. campus. Absolutely. Because that's, I'm sorry, Vesper, we're going to get to you in just a second. Being that's at fine. an HBCU, you're definitely in a bubble. Like I was in the Atlanta University Center. You got Clark, you got Morehouse, you have, you know, Morris Brown, Spellman. We're a tight-knit family. It's like being in a bubble. It's when you step outside of that and you go, ooh, I'm still in a Southern state. That's when you have that realization. So, I mean, and Flame and I have kind of talked about that offline too. Jamarcus is going to Tennessee. He's got to be careful. He has to be. Hi, Vesper. How are you? No, but I understand what you're talking about because, you know, I'm from Atlanta and I'm in Atlanta and, you know, downtown Atlanta. I mean, it, it inside 285 is mm -hmm. so progressive. It's more progressive than California. You know, but then as soon as you get outside of 285, it's like it hit or miss. You could run into a Trump supporter and a hardcore socialist mm -hmm. in the same walking up, you know, down the sidewalk. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, the thing, the thing that's bothering me the most about all of this, it, you know, with all of these these shootings is the lack of empathy. Like, you know, none of none of this makes sense. Police officers are not to interpret the law they aren't to enforce the law and you know all this talk about good people with guns well when have the police showed us that they actually are good people with guns like maybe we just need to do like the uk they don't like honestly they don't need guns and if they're too afraid to do their job without a gun then they don't need to be doing their job there it is right there. There it is right there, Vesper. And that's why I've been saying for all the whole time. They'll keep giving cowards guns. Y'all done gave little crazy Johnny, little crazy Ray Ray, who done terrorized the whole family and everybody. But now y'all, the uncle, but the uncle is a police officer, so he helped him get the job. And y'all have released this idiot on the world to us and who don't like black people or who don't like people with a darker hue. Because you ain't necessarily got to be black. Because the lieutenant was not black. He just had a dark hue. And, and I'll say this too. This is not to say that all police officers are bad because I don't want to paint that narrative on the show either. My uncle is recently retired police officer. My grandfather was a police uh, officer also on LAPD. So there are some good police officers that actually do their job correctly. We don't want to paint that narrative either. However, there is a huge issue because even with those black officers that are on the job, there's still racism and hazing and other things that they have to fight. We still need to have police reform at the end of the day and this is coming from a niece who like i said i have an uncle that just retired my father works for the fire department that's a whole nother animal so there has right. to be some type of reform that happens because flame has said it vesper you have said it we have these white officers that are going into these rural neighborhoods that are one that are scared 24 7 and don't know how to de-escalate situations mm -hmm. vesper you also said too in the uk they don't even use guns and they actually know how to disarm somebody with a weapon without having to, you know, fire a gun. So something has to be done at this point. 200 shootings, it's only April. Uh, 200 officer-involved shootings since 2021. Something's got to happen. I got a suggestion. Well, I have a suggestion. I think that they should have the lieutenant who just de-escalated the whole situation but still got pepper spray. They should let him teach a class to police on the... He handled... He handled that situation like Cheryl and Underwood handled Sharon Osbourne's situation. He handled that situation. But the problem is we have this class and then what happens? Well, shit. Nothing. Well. Nothing happens because we end up with the police officers have a mentality because of our culture. It's not even just a police culture. It's the culture in America that when you see someone that is a darker hue, 
that automatically we're biased, all of us, myself included, to assume danger. And, you know, it, it takes personal responsibility to overlook that. But, I mean, they've done studies on this. Black officers, white officers, they all shoot black people the same amount. So it's not really a race thing. It's a police mentality thing. It's a cultural thing that we all have to do. And, you know, to your point, uh, Lauren, you asked what is different. The biggest thing that's different now is we're aware. Mm -hmm. Before, nobody paid attention. It was happening, but nobody paid attention. The difference now is everybody's paying attention. Every time it happens, it goes viral. It becomes a thing. So as long as we keep that awareness, it's going to eventually change. But we have to keep pushing. We have to keep coming up with ideas and pushing good ideas because the stuff that we're doing now is an old way of doing things that does no longer serve us. So we have to do better. We have to be more loving. We have to promote empathy. And we have to make sure that we remove the situation from ever being a possibility by removing their guns, by putting those officers that discharge their weapons on desk duty for the rest of their career. That will that will make them think twice before they pull that gun out. Desk because duty. none of them uh, yeah, not as the police officers. They they should be fired and their pensions should be stripped. And you did make the that first point you made, Vestman, when you what did you say? You just said it again. Love uh, and empathy. Uh, the reason we don't seem to have empathy, Vesper, because there's so many shootings and it looks like we, it has become commonplace. We have almost become complacent yeah. with this. Oh, another one. Oh, another one. You know, you hear it and you're like, wow. Even when it's kids or old people. Wow. And then you just go about your day and like yeah. like nothing. That 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 That's how we have been. It's ingrained into us because it's been happening so much and not just now they trying to make it look like it's more now because i already know what the you know my conspiracy theory is they trying to make it more prevalent now so in 2022 they can say that the world was safer under trump's watch than under uh biden's watch i don't believe that at all they just showing more of the shootings the shootings were still happening under biden's i mean under trump's administration they he just did right. so much other ridiculous shit that sometimes the shooting didn't make the news because he did ridiculous shit on purpose you know kind of like when caitlin killed the white Woman, and then when it got titties and the titties superseded her becoming yeah let me just say what i said the titties superseded the murder this is what i'm saying we have become it's just like wow lauren, lauren if lauren would have walked in the door today say oh flame i just saw four kids get shot right here on the street i don't want to look out the door and say oh my god are they mine and then i would have came in the house and did kept laugh and learn like it was nothing and i'm not saying that like i'm disregarding it but this is how we are right now this is where the country is i know what you're saying we're all decent sensitized to it because we've seen it so much that that's it i mean and the thing about it is i don't think th this is i'm gonna open up a can of worms and come i on, realize that on. we like cans I'm of cold. worms Go ahead. this laugh and learn open it damn it we ready over since obama the numbers the fbi numbers of officers involved shootings against white people has actually increased and surpassed the number of black people. And this is something that the Proud Boys and all those racist motherfuckers love to use as a talking point. That, oh, they're shooting white, white lives matter because they're shooting white people more. Well, here's my thing. If they're shooting white people more, then that is a definite reason that they need to be on the side of black lives matter. Because if they're shooting white people, they're shooting black people, they're sh like, it, if anyone, regardless of their color of skin, is getting shot by the police, it can happen to anyone. And now we actually have factual scientific evidence of the numbers that they are shooting everyone. So, like, none of this makes sense. We are desensitized to it. But the fact is, there is no excuse for anyone to say, oh, this is normal and this is okay. And they're out there right now protesting some White Lives Matter protests. Well, if y'all cared about <laughs> White Lives Matter, you care about taking away the police's guns. So they can't shoot. Well, on another note to that, I thought it was funny. I don't know if you guys saw this video. There was a White Lives Matter rally at Trump Tower in New York um, this past weekend. There was this Nazi there and the New York uh, City police actually escorted him out very peacefully and then hailed a cab for him. So he got home safely. So just showing you the differences in what's happening there was in the a world. White Lives, there was a White Lives Matter rally this weekend in Huntington Beach, California. 
You know, Ooh, so that's right they're up popping the up all over. That's right up the street, Flavor. I was thinking the same thing. And Huntington Beach is actually pretty nice. But here's the here's the caveat, Lauren, to your point. They were outnumbered by, by those who live in Huntington Beach and said, oh, no, not here. We're not doing this. Uh, mm-hmm. you all, they shut it down because the, uh, the those who were there to support White Lives Matter were outnumbered by those who were like, uh, I don't care what permit you have. You're shutting this down. We don't do this here. So let's yeah. go. And, and yep, sure enough. I will say, though, Vesper, I do appreciate your optimistic viewpoint, you, though. Vesper, I think that yes. that's still important for us to have in times like this. Yes, we have to state the facts and understand the crisis that we're in. But I think it's still good when we have those optimistic views. So thank you. And, and I just want to leave you all with one note. Like, we can't change other people. And if we keep trying, we're just wasting our energy. The only people we can change is ourselves. So if we make ourselves better and continue to have these conversations, eventually people will catch on. Uh, Vesper, let me just give you a heads up to my flamettes. I'm building the ark in my backyard because I know he's coming back. And I'm letting y'all know we. I'm not taking no two animals. I don't like fucking with flies and none of that shit. I don't, I don't care about. I will take two people though. So y'all need to just pick out who going because I'm gonna take a couple of people with me. Because I'm telling you right now, the only way to end racism, God gonna have to start it all over again. I, I truly believe he's going to have to eradicate the entire planet and we start all over again. That means I mm-hmm. won't be here. But if I get my ark, I it depends on how much money y'all got. And if you cute, I'll let you ride. <laughs> Well, shoot, that's what the Lord did uh, with uh, with Noah. N- no, with uh, Moses. Remember, he made them stay in the desert for, yeah, 40, for years 40 years to get rid of everybody yeah. that, you know. Yeah. It, it, anyway, we don't it, need to get into it. It has to be. A, that's the only way I can see it going right, a do-over. We have to do a do-over. And, and we know that that's virtually impossible unless you watch 2011 Bill Gates interview. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you, Vesper. <laughs> Thank you, Vesper. Uh Miss <laughs> Titi Jan, I am cracking up. She said I ain't doing shit, so my behavior is fine. We love you, Titi Jan, so much. Ooh, that was funny. Um, one thing I will say on this last note is I really do. I know sometimes we criticize the media on this show, but I will say that the press conference that was held in um, Minnesota after Dante Wright's shooting, I appreciate all of the reporters that were in that room because they asked the questions that needed to be asked. And they called the police chief out when he was wrong, when he tried to say, well, there was a riot. And they said it wasn't a riot. It was a peaceful protest. Then those are the folks that you attacked and they retaliated against you. And that led to the, the looting and all of these different things that happened. They even said that they threw a tear gas bomb that almost, you know, hit an apartment building that could have affected a whole bunch of people. So I do want to say that the media did an outstanding job in that press conference and asking that police chief and correcting him when he was wrong. So, oh, Nick, before we go on moving, let's give let me give an acknowledgement to the mayor. T.T. Jan, what's her name? First black female mayor of St. Louis. She just won the election uh, last week. So I I can't think of her name. Jan is on here. She'll say it. But Mm -hmm. uh, she just won. So hats off to her because we are still moving forward in spaces. So with all the negative and all the bad that we see, black folks and even look. Lida Cruson. No. What's her name? No, no, no. That's not her name. T- uh, Tashana Jones. That's her name. That's her name. Tashana Jones, who just won. And, and G- TG Jam was on Coffee Time the other day. I'm sorry, Flame. Tashara. I want to make sure we give her the right shout out. Tashara. I believe she pronounces it Tashara. Yep. Okay. Well, congratulations to Tashara Jones in um, uh, St. Louis for becoming the first black female mayor. We are moving forward as black people. We do, but, and I just said, another black woman. Black women. Black women right now. For the last at least two, three years that we, and uh, well, not for the last two, three years, for such a long time, but now they're getting the recognition that they deserve. Let me say that correctly, because I don't want to get slapped. Lauren sitting right next to me, you know she (laughs) take jujitsu and shit. Uh, (laughs) Have really stepped up and they are getting a, a lot more praise, a lot more accolades, and a lot more notoriety because of their work that they have been doing consistently for, shit, how many years since... Black, <laughs> since the vagina monologue, what the vagina monologue say, black women built this country. Black women built this country. Talk about it. I will say though, on that note, because I know we maybe we maybe pushing the clock a little bit, but we say we have about ten minutes left. I think we can end this episode on a lighter note Please do. for the black community. So, Nick, I'm saying that because I do want to segue into L.A. County uh, is in the process of trying to return <laughs> yeah. the land that was stolen from a black family actually in um manhattan beach 
They're looking to return the um, property back to the original owners, who was actually a black family who had Manhattan Beach stolen from them. I hope their last name is Parker. <laughs> Um, let me, uh, Nick, do you have the article in front of you so we I can get indeed. the names of the owner? Thank you. Black yeah, go descendants ahead. of Bruce's Beach owner could get Manhattan Beach land back under a plan. The descendants of the black family that once owned a thriving oceanfront resort in Manhattan Beach could get the property back under state legislation announced on Friday. Backers of the proposal, which will be introduced by State Senator Stephen Bradford of Gardenia, said the first step where towards correcting uh, the historic injustice that was seized, uh, the resort of Charles and Willa Bruce and forced black beach goers out of town 100 years ago. Oh, well, this is interesting. My mother just said that Manhattan Beach City Council voted no. I didn't know that. Hi, Miss Marsha. Mm. Um, well, we'll follow this more, but shoot, I, I was trying to end on a light note, but I guess not anymore. Um, we still end but on I, a think, light note. I think still just this whole process, though, of even considering forms of reparations i think this is the least that can be done because there's a lot of land across this country that was stolen from specifically black communities we can even take it to a history lesson of let's go to central park in new york that was actually called seneca village that was seneca. a very seneca village that was a very popular affluent black community that had literally pushed all these black folks out so that way they could build central park so if we're going to start talking about reparations and giving back what is owed, I am all for this. And it needs to happen more across this country. Mm. So what's fair? Rep- what do you think would be fair rep- rep- reparations now? Seriously? Well, shoot, Manhattan Beach is worth 72, $72 million. So um, let's see what the value of the land is. And then we can determine what the reparation status should be. Well, uh, that's $72 million. Are those Bruce's? Well, their last name used to be Parker and it changed over to Bruce. I'm asking. $72 you million. You might need to do an Ancestry.com oh. swab and see if you're related. <laughs> Shit. Run me a check. I'll take it. Flame, Nick, you asked I, about reparations. I, I've, I've honestly I've, I've thought about that. I, I do think that the... I think that one of the greatest equalizers is education, right? And I believe that one should be able to go to a public school and have the same quality education as a student that goes to a private school. So if there is some way to make that equitable across communities, across different demographics, I think that would be an excellent place to start when we're talking about reparations, in all honesty, that if you can get every kid to be able to learn with the same enthusiasm, have the same resources, have all the same amenities that they have in the better zip codes, I think that that is a great place to start. I think that's nice and all, and I don't disagree with you on that, Nick, but I think that land is more important. And I'll just say that because of uh, the like the generational wealth and things like that, that the black folks just weren't afforded in this country, having a place to be able to call home and Mm -hmm. like, this is your place where you can stay. You don't have to worry about things like homelessness and poverty and, you know, where you're going to eat health and wellness. A lot of that is just encompassed. You, there's so many different disparities that are encompassed with land specifically. So while education, yes, is important, but being able to have a place that's called your own that you know is not going to be taken away from you, that you can pass on from generation to generation. I think that's more, vital honestly at this point in time because of the country that we're living in lauren i just feel like i just feel like education is one thing that can't be taken away like i have friends who own property in sonoma county and windsor and they suffered through those wildfires last year and they've got all they still own that burnt out brush of land but the homes that they had that they grew up in that their grandparents built and all of that and i'm not i'm not negating that i understand that they want to hold on to that property but there's something about being educated and knowing that you're better than your circumstances and knowing that anything is possible that 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 just can't be stripped you can strip away property and you can't take that with you but there's something about that burning fire of knowledge and wanting to learn and just that hunger that i think is absolutely invaluable so but i don't believe that every kid believes that you know well, I mean, I, I hear you, um, but I, that's just my opinion. I think land is at the is at the forefront of it because to have something that's yours because you have highly. We talked about veterans in this situation. We have all of these highly educated. You know, you went, you fought for your country, and all these mm-hmm. different things. You came back to nothing. You had nothing, so you end up being homeless. You end up not being able to afford to you know eat. You end up you know your health is in crisis, and you can't get you know assistance. So there's. I don't know. That's that's just for me. I feel like that right. encompasses the most. Uh, yeah, I don't come with even no reparations. I don't want no check. I'm still waiting on my 40 acres and a mule. Didn't they promise us 40 acres and a mule? We still waiting on it. Spike Lee, yeah, said that's what we. Oh my God, look! 
40 acres and a mule. See? I'm actually wearing a Spike Lee uh, jersey today, uh, so really? that's funny. <laughs> yes, it says 40 acres and a mule on Did my he patch. get his 40 acres and his mule? Well, Spike Lee just got his first Oscar a couple of years ago, so shoot. How many? How long has he been making movies? Anyway, yeah. that's another conversation. Um, I, I don't even know what would, would be fair with reparations, and I know this is going to sound real fucked up, y'all, but I'm going to say it anyway. Y'all know I don't care. They make money. It's not like it's grown. It's not like it's it's like bananas that's grown on a tree or fruit. They make money. Money is printed. You can make enough money. This is what drives the economy. And yet they have shown us clearly with this whole stimulus shit that if they want to prove something, they can click one button and checks will go into accounts immediately. Everyone in this country should be doing better. Give everybody $100,000. Two hundred, whatever it takes, because I hear you niggas with the education. You know how many millionaire and billionaire rappers that we have now that have never had an education? They were slinging on the streets. They 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 found their joy. They found their talent. They found their voice, and now they are billionaires and millionaires and power brokers and money makers and woo woo woo. And they didn't go to college, but they hustle hustle hustle. So giving people the education, I understand exactly what you're saying. But if the drive is not in that person and the hustle is not in them, they're gonna have the education, and it's gonna be a piece of paper that sits on the wall in a, in a plaque forever. They ain't gonna do shit with it. You got a point. I got. I gotta agree with you, Flame. The, the, that's, you, the that's person a very got valid to have a fire. The fire got to be in your ass B- before I'm giving you an opportunity to put you in a school. You got to want. I can't want it for you. You have to want it yourself. And everybody don't do that, Nicholas. And I, you know, black, white, young, old, everybody just don't have that. Some people have a drive. You had a drive. You knew you wanted to go to school. I remember you telling me that when you we were young. You was going to school no matter what. And you, we had we both had adversities and uh, obstacles to crawl over. But I didn't want to go to school. You did. You went to school. You had the school drive. Everybody doesn't have that. So affording them the opportunity don't mean nothing. Give them something where they can make something of what they want to do to find their joy because everybody ain't for school. Everybody, education is just not for everyone. That does not mean that they won't be successful in life. So I'm going to open this up to you guys. Are we bringing in one more flame matter? Do yeah. you guys want to wrap up? Yeah, real one quick. More? Two minutes. Three more. minutes. Hey, hey Miss T.T. Jan. I wish I could say correcting my behavior is the core of the problem or would make the problem less than a problem. But I'm good with my behavior, and that is not a put down to anybody. But I am emotionally beaten by the subject of being beaten by my color or just because of my color. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and it's all the more troubling that we can't even comfort one another. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? I can't say to a young black man, um, well, this too shall pass. Just be sure you don't argue with the police. You can't say any of that. You you just can't offer any resolution. Um, So, you know, it's a shame because this is nothing new. This behavior is nothing new. Cell phones are putting it out there more. Uh, Social media is putting it out there more. But we all know this is no new behavior. Uh, The police department uh, has a code uh, amongst themselves or a brothering. And that's the reason you see a lot of their fraternal order presidents be like baby Hitler. Because they run on this code. And for the most part, all you had were a bunch of rejects going to the police department. And, and mm. because the uncle served, <laughs> then they brought in the useless nephew and gave him an opportunity. Not the useless nephew. <laughs> <laughs> look crazy, Johnny. Look, Johnny, that set right. the dog, the cat tail on fire and shit. Look crazy one. Mm-hmm. Right. Now, generally speaking, because I like you, um, Lauren, we have a family of military and police officers. But when we get involved, Nick, thank you for your service. When we get involved, we're getting involved on the level of being all we can be, doing a good job. You just thrown into this mess to do damage control or things weigh more heavily on you because you got some people who are just using this as a means to be nasty to folks. I mean, these people would be useless and would find some way to be racist, even if they were sanitation engineers. It's just 
something within that, them. What happens, I think, because the cultures or their younger folks are sucking up our community, that's what's going to shift it a little bit. Trump made it very popular to come out as a racist, but at the end of the day, their children want to be with our children. Their children want to listen to our music. Hmm. Uh, we get to a certain level where even our community starts giving a head nod and we start calling what they're doing as they're trying to mimic us as having a hustle. You, you can't fault them for having a hustle. They're trying to pick up our community. They don't want the struggle. They want how we buff off their edges off of us and present ourselves. So they pick and choose. So it's a shame. It's not your behavior. It's not my behavior at all. I'm still going to commend uh, the police officers in the military be because I know largely it's not those people who are trying to do the right thing. It's just like the guy who was in intelligence and his wife went to the Capitol and she got killed. He was like, I, you know, I don't know what made her do that. You know, so I'm not just like he didn't have to relax or step away from his duties. I'm not shouldering anybody's, anybody's damage whatsoever. This community will take the words of, of people who have some money, and we start letting them talk for us. And the study being quieter, getting on issues that, from grassroots folks who have been working, they just make these 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 big old brushstroke statements, and they're clueless. We are the only community that let the P Diddies and the Q make statements. You know, so it's a lot to fight. But I think as we just stand in our truth, who we are, and we got to keep our heads on a swivel, but it's taxing. I mean, my son called me today. He was like, can you tell me the weight of a taser? Make it make sense to me. And I had to let him make full circle with his reasoning because there's no way. He was trying to challenge me and my even temperament because he wants to have yeah. this chip. I had to talk him out of what she should have been skilled and anybody trained to de-escalate and talk him through. Yeah. So I, that that's all that we are equipped to do. Um, and, and I mean, you can see how Asian Americans, their men fight the women, our women in their nail shops. They, if one of our, if they feel like one of their customers steps out, the man starts immediately fighting the woman. So it's almost constantly that we've been put in these small characters until they want to dub something from us. I, I want to add on to that, T.T. Jan, because I think you also touched on a point that I, I mean, I find it very important is that the fact that we constantly, as Black folks in America or people of color, we constantly have to figure out like, well, let's try and rationalize this. Let's like, th like, how do we make this make sense? And I feel like that also adds to the mental health issue that a lot of us experience because we're put in these positions of where we have to figure out how to make it make sense. And it's something that doesn't make sense. And that just continues to add on to the perpetual cycle. So I think that's also very important for us to understand that it's not our responsibility to make it make sense. Right. That's not, that, it, that burden shouldn't be it, on us. Exactly. I'm hands down with you on that. It's not my problem to fix. Yeah. I'm not going to wake up and be a white woman with blue eyes. I like being black. Hmm. It's not me too. Being all the time, but I like being black. Mm -hmm. I love my melanin girl. Mm -hmm. Right. I like being just who right. God made me. I, I always say that right. I'm not anti nothing else, but I am right. pro exactly who I am. I'm pro black, right. pro black, pro right. trans, pro he, she, we, pro all that. Mm -hmm. But you said, Janet, that they want our children. They want our children. Their children want to play with our children. That's why right. I always used to say, and I still say, racism is a learned behavior because yeah. little kids see other little kids the same mm -hmm. size as them, and if they're not being told mm -hmm. at home or hearing the nigger word or you can't play with that person because they're black. 
I see somebody that look like me, not not physically look like me, but the same size as me, right. we're going to be friends. It's always right. a parent or who's ever in charge to say, you can't play with them yeah. because they're not like you. What you, you mean they're so not right. like me? They the same age right. as me. They, they, they playing jacks like I'm playing jacks. They playing jumping jacks like me. Right. It is always some idiotic, Right. long-term racist who hate himself or herself that instill right. that into their children. I.e., what's the little boy name that shot the people that doing the... Uh, Kyle Rittenhouse? Rittenhouse. I.e., yeah. his raggedy-ass mammy who drove him over there to shoot the people Bro. and then the police let him drive, her, let her drive him back. Child, please. But I, I, I will say, though, I think that the, <laughs> the, the small window of hope, though, in T.T. Jane, you kind of said it, too, is that it's the younger generations that are kind of breaking the cycle of yes. the racism being taught and understanding the broader picture. And it's those folks that are going to be instrumental in really changing the trajectory of how we move forward at this point. Yes. So I think that's also going to be the key point. Y'all love to talk about millennials and who we are, but we're also turning out to be the ones that got the most sense Girl, these all right. knock So I'm going to just say that. Y'all don't know that much. Knock it up. Y'all, <laughs> that, y'all. that is, that is the truth, Lord. You know, some of you guys go a little too much with hugging the tree, but I'm with you. And you are very- well, lo- I know Lauren's mama, so let me tell you something. It also came from, like we've been talking about, yeah. who who brought her up, who raised Straight her. Straight up. Well, oh, yeah. My mom and my dad. I got to give shout out to them. True that. Right. Yeah. But of course. But of course. And so, you know, I think you guys are doing the shift. Mm-hmm. And that's where it's going to happen because my behavior is fine. Hmm. That's because we, we over 50, TTJ, and we going to just, it, look, this is it. This is it. You Did don't you get it no other way. Did you just tell your real age for the first time? I thought you were 30. I said I was over 50. I identify as 30, but yeah. <laughs> Um, but you know, this is me. I identify as 30, but for real, you know, let's be real about this shit. I also identify as a female right now, but I just pulled my dress up. I hope Kendall moved that out the way because I ain't got no panties on. Y'all would pay for that. T-shirt with no panties on, baby. Jan, and thank yes. you so much. You yes. have brought, as always, as always, You're you always deliver out. the information. Yep. You always. Yes. And, and, I, and you, you're correct. I'm sorry. Our our mayor elect is a Delta, <laughs> but a black woman. It's all and divine nine. Is, it's okay. Pronounce her name for her us, name, Jan. What's her name? Her name is Tashara Jones. Tashara Jones. Okay. Yes. Tashara Jones. Thank so, you, Nick. Yeah. Thank you, Jan. All right. Jan. Thanks, guys. Talk to you later. Thank Jan, you so thank much. you so much. That's Love TT you, Jan. That's Waze Williams. Y'all make sure y'all follow Jan because Jan is always knowledgeable and always is like the hammer. And She's like Thor's hammer. It. Yes. Boom. Yes, you know, indeed. Lauren Flame, that's one of the best things about 2021 that things are opening back up and we will actually get a chance to meet many of your flame mets in person. Yes, oh, we we're going back, back on, the, on road. the road, honey. Mm-hmm. May 15th to 16th, we finally got Delaware fixed. We're going to the House of Laughs. We got, we got everything straight. <laughs> and you have your first show in L.A. on the 23rd. On, I have a show with Tiffany Haddish in Huntington Beach. Ooh, you think they're going to be rioting? On the 23rd. <laughs> <laughs> well, Flame, you, you have, depending on what you wear, you have caused a riot or two. Now, come on. The body ain't the same. The, 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 the riots <laughs> now won't be, they won't be because I'm sexy. The riots now going to be like, damn, she thick. Baby, I'm telling you something right now. I had to watch my 600-pound life yesterday just to get inspired not Ooh. to get big. <laughs> I didn't watch it. I didn't watch it to be like, ooh, I watched That's one of them shows that look at you like, God damn it, I promise I ain't going to get that big. <laughs> Sometimes you need the little reality check. It's okay. But that's you that's have what my to, mama's for yeah. for me. She gives me my reality check every once in a while. Oh, y'all please don't say nothing about Lauren on here. Because Lauren, be, <laughs> baby, she be at home patting. Oh, that's if I got a chin. She patting. I'm like, what is you patting? Girl, I got a chin. <laughs> oh my god this was fun thank you guys so much i just got here last minute good information all i can tell you guys my message because i'm gonna let nick and lauren close it out is whatever this decision will be with this uh derek chauvin case i'm telling you guys please be someplace that you are familiar with that you feel very safe at because i don't i think i personally think no matter what the decision will be the outcome will be not not pleasant that's some of the words I'm gonna say not pleasant because we have people who want him to get off even though we have watched him murder this man they still but they have a lot of people who want him to get off and we have a lot of people like us who don't want him to go we saw the we saw the brutality we saw the murder in our face but 
this court system is not set up for us, and this judge is definitely not uh, favorable towards the darker hue. Maybe he needs a taser. Hmm. No, I'm definitely in agreement with you. I think that this is a time where we all need to have a heightened awareness and make sure that we're being safe. Um, I more so just want to say that I'm very grateful that, one, that we have this show because I'm just thinking, like, for instance, Flame came home today. She was mad at her kids. I had some other stuff going on work-wise and everything. But I'm glad that we have this space to share information because I think it's a it's an outlet for a lot of people that maybe don't have, you know, the opportunity to do that mm -hmm. in their everyday lives. So I'm coming out of this, although we talked about some heavy subjects today, I'm coming out of this with a kind of bit of a weight lifted off my chest that I was able to, you know, kind of release on some things so I'm, I'm grateful definitely that we can when we have this and when we can kind of you know engage all of our flame to brighten some people's days lauren i'm so glad you said that because i think when flame and i started this we we've known each other long enough where we sometimes almost finish each other's sentences when you joined it was like a breath of fresh air because it brought a different perspective i'm like whoa i didn't think about it that way and you said it before, you know, we, we, we can disagree and we don't have to be disagreeable. And I think that that's what the conversation is all about. Earlier this week, like I told you, I was in D.C. and the White House is still behind a barrier. That breaks my heart because I do think it's one of the most beautiful buildings. But in the shadow of 1600 Pennsylvania is Black Lives Matter Plaza. Mm -hmm. And I'm just reminded that once again, the strength of community, the power of my people, I am proud to be in this black skin. I have it adopted and I'm owning my big blackness. I'm not, I'm not worried about anymore not being light and attractive to people anymore. I'm just going to be who I am and move and own that space. And because of situations like this, I have an opportunity to let things off my chest as well, like you just said. And I love, love, love the fact that we have an opportunity to do this here on Laugh and Learn. Because again, we're not trying to get anybody to change their mind. We're just simply trying to get you guys to use your mind. And some of y'all dumbasses ain't got no man. So I'm trying to give y'all a man. Because I'm telling you right now, if you want to do the science, let me, before I close, because I'm going to start some shit right now. Uh, let me start some shit. The science I and the politics. The science and the politics. The science, the, the, the Lysol can says kills coronavirus. That's the science. That's and the politics. The science of the vaccine says testing. You know how many tests I failed? Okay. Including a couple of STDs. <laughs> Flame. Listen, listen, listen. Coronavirus kills vaccine. Lysol said kills coronavirus. Testing says we're testing. You ain't testing shit on me. Uh, I want to say before we leave, uh, prayers to DMX and his whole family, all his children, his baby mamas, and everybody who was involved with him. Uh, I do not believe that he died from a drug overdose. He had been looking so good in the last few weeks and been speaking so well on about the Lord and just preaching and putting out positive messages and woo woo woo. I don't know what the after effect was. I don't know what happened with him. I, we've heard uh, all these situations are coming out. All these stories. I don't know. I wasn't there. I'm not a doctor. But prayers to DMX. Rest, may he rest in peace. Because I still use party up when I do rap numbers. Mm -hmm. Dun dun dun. I still you know give, Nicholas, you was there when I when I, I did yep. party up. And, and Lauren may know more about this too. Lauren, I read something r recently about DMX that Beyonce and Jay-Z are buying the masters. Did you read that too? Yeah, yeah. I read that they bought the masters um, and, the and they're to the trying kids. to give the money to the kids. Yeah, I yeah. did read that. So. If that is indeed true, that's amazing because you and I, yeah. we've talked about owning the actual, owning your work. So yeah, definitely. Well, Beyonce, yeah. you know, Beyonce is, is amazing anyway she's a she philanthropist is a great she really humanitarian is. and she loves her city but i think they were friends they were all friends her swiss beats jay-z all of them are friends yeah i need some rich friends like that niggas when will you when you gonna get rich i'm so tired i know right <laughs> I know. but but you, as long, long, long as we got love we don't need money right don't nobody i don't give a damn about no love you can't even got the whole <laughs> suit on you ain't even got a whole suit on i bet you ain't got no pants on <laughs> you know what <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us here at Laugh and Learn. You can follow Nick Smith on all social media platforms at Nick Smith News. You guys do know that our new uh, audio component come our audio components come out Wednesday nights at midnight on iHeart, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, or wherever you listen to your podcast. But the video component comes out when, Lauren? It comes out on Saturday at midnight now. So. Yeah, which, which is actually Friday night. So when y'all at home, after we do Laugh and Learn, or Love Lounge, then that's when we go do that. Because I always do Love Lounge on Friday. Even though I didn't do it this Friday, I, was, I wasn't home. But we're doing it tonight. 
Uh, you can follow Lauren Hogan. She has a, a YouTube page, Lauren Hogan. Ooh. <laughs> and she's Lauren Armani H on Instagram and on Facebook. And well, who am I? Where am I? What am I? Oh, you got a lot. You got Monroe Flame on Instagram. You got Marcus Flame Monroe Parker on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You got Flame Monroe on YouTube. Oh, I got He She We too on Facebook. We got He She We page, oh, right? Oh, yeah. I didn't. Did you, did you read make, that? No, on Instagram. Did no, 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 Instagram. Yeah, we have a this is laugh and learn page. I need to update it, so that's why I'm, I haven't been pushing it. But we're gonna get that together too. So thank you to Kendall. Thank you to Tribble, who we could not do this show without. Uh, I appreciate you guys joining us. We are very grateful to have you guys here. We are doing pretty well actually with uh, iHeart, you guys, and we appreciate that from you all. Because if it wasn't for y'all listening and sharing and liking and subscribing and shit, we would just be sitting here twiddling our thumbs and talking shit like everybody else. But at least we y'all at least. We y'all come to hear us talk shit, and we appreciate that. And we allow you guys to come in because I'm again. I'm going to say we have the smartest listeners on the internet because y'all know I ain't the brightest bitch on the. You know I didn't go to college. I well I was in the dorm, but I didn't go to school. Mm -hmm. it, 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 oh. <laughs> 